weather is being influenced by a tropical wave. We had a tropical wave that passed through the region Sunday into Monday, and that produced a lot of rainfall over the islands across the northeastern Caribbean, also the eastern Caribbean. When the wave entered the area, it brought a lot of moisture and instability. And given there was an upper level trough, which is a feature that when it interacts with a low level feature such as the tropical wave, it enhances convection and give us the rainfall that we would have seen over the weekend and into Monday. Here is St. Martin and the convection with the tropical wave that affected us over the weekend has already passed and is further to the west going towards Puerto Rico. So Puerto Rico can expect their inclement weather from today. And we have a tropical wave towards the east and there is a lot of convection associated with it. Currently, we have a break in convection across, uh, deep convection across the area coming to the eastern Caribbean towards St. Martin. So just a few patches of shallow convection that is giving us a few passing showers, nothing significant right now. However, later on into the day overnight, we can expect the moisture from this area here to be advected with the clouds across the eastern Caribbean and even over the northeastern Caribbean, giving St. Martin some more shower activity and possible isolated thunderstorms. So we're not out to the zone of the rainfalls this year? No. It's just there's currently a reduction in the amount of moisture and instability across the area. And the moisture and instability, when the atmosphere is unstable, it's possible to have area of disorgan disorganized weather, disturbed weather. And once there's disturbed weather, any system that comes across that can help to that can help to blow it up. So we are not out of the zone, especially since we're in the hurricane season. It is expected to have cloudiness coming across sometimes, a tropical wave. We know tropical waves are normal, but it's just how we react. Some tropical waves can just come across into an area of dry air. As we have you seen, we've been having a lot of Saharan dust. When there's Saharan dust, that helps to reduce the moisture in the area, limit the effect of the moisture in the area, and the system does not develop as much. However, if it's clear, as a tropical wave passed, and it had washed away some of the dust in the air, and another tropical wave entered the area, it is a conducive environment, just waiting for something to give us some showers. So that's it for our weather forecast for the next 24 hours. Currently, we do have something that has came across the coast of Africa, which is a tropical wave. The National Hurricane Center is monitoring it, also our office. And currently, it has a low chance of developing into a tropical cyclone. However, the conditions across the Atlantic are becoming favorable, so it's possible that there can be some development over the weekend. However, within the next five days, it has a very low chance of becoming a tropical cyclone. Currently, we do have a tropical wave east of the Eastern Caribbean. And as you can see here, there is some convection developing. And this convection is developing because there's lingering moisture and instability in the atmosphere from the tropical wave that would have passed us over the last few days. So although we have a reduction in moisture and instability over our area this morning and is expected for most of the day, later on we can see this patch of convection propagating over the Atlantic and coming towards us. So maybe into the evening and next morning, we can expect an increase in shower activity again with possible isolated thunderstorms. 
Well, as you know, we are in the hurricane season and not just the tropical wave, but also hurricane preparedness. We should be prepared in the event this system or any system blows up and develop into a tropical storm or hurricane. Persons should ensure that their roofs, windows are fixed. If there's any blockage to maybe they have a drain near their home, if they have trees, they should try to remove these if they can cause an obstruction to their home, cause any damage. Because sometimes the wind speed can also increase. We have been having gusty winds over the last few days and as other systems come across and they come with strong winds, it, possible, it is possible for trees to be blown down if your roofs are not fixed well or if there's any debris around your yard that can cause damage to your home and also maybe a person. We must remember that the hurricane season runs from June 1st to November 30th and it only takes one system to affect our area to give us a bad season as you would have seen with Irma. Irma was a devastating category 5 hurricane and it caused catastrophic destruction on St. Martin. What we should do is remember that being prepared is key. Sometimes not just the development of a tropical cyclone. As we would have seen over the last few days, a tropical wave passed across the area and gave us an high amount, a high amount of rainfall. The rainfall led to flooding in some areas. Persons need to take these things into consideration. Not only the winds and not only the tropical cyclones. Rainfall also can cause flooding and disrupt our lives. So we must be prepared. And with being prepared, we need to take into consideration the Meteorological Department, which is the official source for weather information in St. Martin. Most persons, a lot of people may want to check other websites, other sources, listen to different broadcasts from other persons. However, it is the Meteorological Department of St. Martin who has the authority to give warnings and watches to prepare people for any devastation that might be coming with a tropical cyclone. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, -E, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. -E. It's been said that behind every door, possibility awaits. How much possibility depends on which door you open first. Every day, we help our customers discover the possibilities in their lives. It all starts with a conversation. Scotiabank. Discover what's possible. The whole aspect what was very interesting was also that 
um, the president of um, e Education International, who is Susan Hopgood. Susan Hopgood um, gave also very inspiring um, words of uh, at the different sessions, and she was the one to actually chair all the Congress meetings with the resolutions, etc. And it was done in a very, very good way. We also had um, uh, words from David Edwards, who is now the General Secretary after the retirement of Fred van Leeuwen. Now, um, one of the real good highlights of this was also the book that was written as the, um, the 25th year of Education International was being celebrated. There was a book that was written by Susan Hopgood and um, Fred van Leeuwen on the 25 things that you need to know. So that is a book that is very handy that have, of course, it speaks the 25, speaks to the 25 years of Education International. And as you know, International Education International is a global organization that defends the rights of the teachers where they have different um, regions. So they have the Asian region and Asian and Pacific, the European, the North America and Caribbean is together and then they have the Latin American and they have the African. And you have within those regions, you have some of the challenges and some of the developments that are more or less the same but you have also some other things that we might not experience at this side but this is what solidarity is about within a global organization you also create the space of having solidarity for um, different um, issues that are being brought to the table and one of the things that um, you would see at this whole, um, um, how you would say, it, at the whole Congress is the seriousness that people go about doing business within the, within the discussions and with in tabling the motions. So a lot of emphasis was being placed on sustainable development goals the fact that they they have been signed off by a number of countries and there are some goals that have to be accomplished by 2030. The fact that we have 11 years more to work on a number of these goals, some of them that are being taken seriously by the governments and others that are not being taken seriously and a lot of emphasis was put and placed on development goal number four, which is education and the rights to education. And um, the strong message that came out there was, again, no to privatization of public education. Public education has to be the rights of a child to free education. And, and therefore, there's also campaigns at certain places that have child labor that goes hand in hand to say, well, then we have to um, work towards the eradication of child labor and we have to speak out against child labor in that field. So instead of children being in agriculture, for example, picking tomatoes, cranberries, strawberries, etc. They should all be in school and that school should be funded by the government. That was uh, um, the sustainable development goal number four. And of course, when you look at number four, you also, as unions, we, then, we also look at number one, which is poverty, okay? because um, poverty is also one of the sustainable, sustainable development goals that should be eradicated by 2030. So we have 11 more years to work on that. And in every region, it might be different. So therefore, 
um, the discussions were very lively, very informative. Um, the challenges that are faced, for example, in the African part of um, the region with um, teachers that are being, for example, killed or being abused, um, violence against the teachers. We don't have that such in such an ex, um, accelerated area or, or way in St. Martin, but it does not mean that we cannot have um, sympathy and, and also solidarity in that case to move motions that would go against this type of, you know, what is happening with teachers in that part. We also had um, a whole movement there on a union leader that is in prison, Lulu, and we had um, a lot of discussions. We heard where people make um, a lot of discussions on that. Hey ma, how are you doing? You busy? I hear, just paying some bills, taking care of business, you know what it is? <laughs> I know, you're doing your online banking. I don't have to stand in those long lines to pay bills. I can transfer when I want, I can check my account wherever. It's like the bank open 24-7. I even hear checking the statement right now as we're talking. How's Miami? Well, that's why I'm calling. I'm finishing up a few songs now. But I'm afraid that studio time might be more than I thought. And I was wondering if I could get some help with some funds and I could pay you back as soon as I get back to St. Martin. Let me check my account. How much you need? I think 500 should be enough. I can transfer it to you while you're online. Direct from me to you. No problem. Great. Thank you so much, Ma. I'll get online with Bib now. Alright, darling. You know who you're for. <laughs> I need to know who you're Contact Web today for your complete personal online banking experience. Available for all mobile devices. The Winwood Islands Bank. Now your online banking partner. Six of our students are leaving today for the Netherlands. Uh, they have gone through a, prep, a series of preparatory workshops uh, to kind of prepare them for the transition to the Netherlands. And of course, uh, we have they have been prepared via their uh, secondary education to transition into tertiary education. 26 students, um, what we've noticed is the fact that they have a lot less male traveling along. Why, what do you think might have contributed to this? Well, that's something throughout the educational system. Uh, I, I, uh, I think uh, it's something that we have noted where uh, more males than f more females than males are pursuing tertiary level education. So, it could be that the males are going into uh, uh, the labor market directly from secondary school. It could be also that, uh, based on uh, the transition from primary to secondary school, that. Uh, a lot of males are going into vo technical vocational education as, as opposed to academic ed education, which kind of uh, this group here is going into academic level education, so uh, not really much for technical vocational education. During a previous interview, you stated that students will be studying in different disciplines. Can you remind us again 
as to what those are and which of those is the most common one for students? Well, uh, it's various, various disciplines. Uh, we have students who are going, to, going into the medical field, students going into the teaching field, students doing hospitality, and also students going into the social, social work area. So, but it's uh, also engineering, but it's a great deal of different uh, variety. But everything, uh, all the students that are departing today are based, uh, they are awarded study financing based on priority studies for the island of St. Martin. In preparing the students for the journey today, first of all, can you walk us through what was done? Basically, we had some different workshops in terms of psychosocial workshops in terms to prepare them for the different culture that they're going into. Because a lot of times, um, although they may be Dutch nationals, when they go to Holland, uh, it's a different way of life. And they have to understand that the things that they can get away with, for example, in St. Martin, they can't get away with there. And they have to be prepared mentally to adapt to their, that, that um, culture and that society. Based on the series of workshops, uh, do you think that the students are quite prepared mentally for the challenge ahead? Basically, I think they're prepared because when we brought in, for example, we held different workshops, we brought in guest speakers, and of course the guest speakers were talking, and now a lot of them, I mean, it's like read in terms of what the guest speakers were saying, because the guest speakers were of their peers, people who, are, who left recently and went to the Netherlands, and of course um, brought back that knowledge and shared it with them. For me, it means um, getting better at myself, perfecting myself, um, in order to come back and give back to my country so that not only me could evolve as a person but also everyone who's growing up. My study, well my study is financial, financial control so I'll be more focusing on consulting a business, how to, how to start up a business, basically every, every department in a business. I will have more knowledge of going in a business basically. Uh, you're coming from which of the schools? I'm coming from NBC Havo. Now, many of us strongly believe that we are going to Holland, we are there to study, but things might not work out in the field that we are pursuing. Is yeah. there a second choice for you? Yeah, because if financial control don't work out, then you can always switch a uh, study. And if you can switch studies, you know, they have accountancy, international business management, they have a lot of a, a, a long variety of studies, basically. Registration is now open for our annual Sports and Creative Industries Open House, which will take place on September 6th and 7th, 2019. Stakeholders are invited to participate. Registration is free as we wish to promote healthy lifestyles and fitness opportunities in St. Martin. Sign up today by calling the National Sports Institute at 542 20239 or visit the office of the Raoul Illich Sports Complex. Registration ends on Friday, August 2nd, 2019, so don't delay. Remember, sports matter. And finally, 
Congratulations to Zidania. St. Martin's flag waved high in the Dominican Republic last week when our 2019 Junior Carnival Queen Zidania Charles Gums brought home the crown for Miss Preteen Model International 2019-2020. Additionally, Zidania captured the prizes in four categories, Best Swimwear, Best Interview, Best Evening Wear, and Best Teen International. Zidania, we celebrate with you and with your family. You've made your country proud.